Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome. This video, we're going to be talking about how we can override a method called toString, which you probably have used. We can actually modify the string to basically determine how we want our custom objects to appear when we use the toString method. So super handy. And now that you're seasoned pros, this kind of junk, like this output method, which returns something, this just ain't going to do. We need to override what people would expect to return a message or a string version of our object. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is a tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So here's how we do this. We go up here and we just say public override and it gives us some options equals get hash code and to string. The reason these exist is because we ultimately inherit from objects. So there's inheritance hierarchy in C sharp and we get these methods by default. So we'll override to string. It returns a string and return base dot to string is going to just do the default behavior. Base means the parent class. But instead, we're not going to do this crap. We're going to make our own version. And all we're really going to do is just return the full name of the person. So we'll say return full name and very similar to this output method. In this output, we were doing some concatenation. Basically, you could build a more complex message if you wanted. In this situation, I think the return full name will pretty much show our point. So let's just keep that. Now we can basically print the full name by doing it directly or through the to string method. So in our code, let's go through an example. We'll get rid of all this junk. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say console dot right line user dot to string. It says redundant to string call. And the reason that is, is because when you do console dot right line, by default, it's going to call dot to string. So we've actually been calling it this entire time, but showing the potential fixes, you can just say remove. So when would you need to leave it on there? Well, for example, if we had a method that was accepting a string and you couldn't just pass in a user, then you would want to say user dot to string. All right, let's run this, see what we get, make sure we're not totally crazy. And you can see we get the expected output. Awesome. This one is very simple because we just have a first name and last name property, but we could build out a more uh, full output of what you might expect an object to output when you say to string. So this could be a way to basically get the, the state of the object or some calculations, whatever it might be. So as we go on, we might get some more complex examples, but this pretty much shows how it's done. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.